Hello, my name is Jorb. I love gear. We're looking at an NPC Live 2 being controlled by an Arteria Keystep. Uh, and all I'm going to do today is step through all of the new synth plugins in the NPC firmware version 2.10. So we're going to do Mellotron, Selena, Odyssey, and then Hype. Uh, I think they're all cool and capable, but they're not super easy to understand. And I think having somebody walk you through it can be pretty, pretty helpful. And I am a hardware synth guy. So I think I got the right vocabulary to talk about it. So that's all we're going to do today. If you are subscribed, appreciate you coming back. If you are not, you probably found this by searching or browsing. I encourage you to look around this channel a little bit. I have a nice long video, for example, where I talk about changing from the NPC 1000 to the Live 2. Uh, if that or anything else you see on my channel interests you, uh, at that point, man, you're, you're losing out if you don't subscribe. <laughs> I'm clearly talking about stuff you care about. And if you subscribe, you don't have to search for it ever again. It'll just get delivered straight to you. So there's my stupid pitch. <laughs> Let's get into the information. Today, I'm going to go in relative order of complexity. If you aren't sure how to get to plugins at all, from uh, an empty project here, just on the main screen, this is defines your track type. These six spots here, go to what looks like a plug, pick your plugins. And then if they're not there, you haven't installed them. So I'm going to link to a video on how to install them. Not from me, from somebody else. But we're going to start with Mellotron. Hold menu. Press pad 14 to get to program edit. We're going to start in the bottom left here. Uh, if you aren't familiar with Mellotron, here's some video I took from Nam in 2019, I believe, of a real one. Uh, the technology is from the 50s. Every key is a different tape loop. of whatever instrument or group of people's voices playing that pitch, singing that pitch. So they would say, sing a C, sing a D, an E, an F. And make copies of those tape loops to be controlled by a tape machine with as many heads as it had keys. I'm not sure how many. But this is what we're emulating, <clears throat> excuse me, of course, with the Mellotron. And here in the bottom left, we can decide between our samples. Is the eight voice choir. There's a boys choir. There's a flute. Strawberry Fields Forever, I'm sure. You've heard that. Violins, plural one. Hold out as long as you want. It starts to loop. Violins too. And a solo violin. And you have a clean switch, which affects all of them. So here is with it off. On. Some tape noise, some hiss. Uh, we're going to leave it clean for now. Let's go back. Leave it clean. And I am going to go back to the flute because I like it the most. And everything to the right here controls our sample. If you aren't familiar with formant filters, do this with your mouth. You're going to laugh at me. Go A E I O U. Okay, and now listen. <laughs> That's sort of the same effect you get by dropping a formant filter. Some of the samples don't seem to be affected by vertical changes or positive changes on the Mellotron here. I'm not sure why, but they're all affected in the downward. Um, by, they're all affected by negative change. Age, we're going to go, where are we at here? Listen to the pitch changes as I play one note. Whoops. Okay, and back down. No P. 
pitch changes. Sample start is exactly what you would expect it to be. You skip the beginning of the sample. Cutoff is a slightly resonant low pass filter. Attack is how long it takes you to fade in. Release, how long it takes you to fade out. But you probably know those things. Up here is all our performance controls. Velocity to our volume. Mod wheel to our vibrato. Aftertouch to our vibrato. And the speed of that vibrato. Okay, this section in the top right, you have sounds for key on and key off. So we're going to turn our attack way up and our cutoff way down. So with them off, we hear nothing. With them on, we're just going to hear the key press sound. Sort of a little additional bit to make things sound more real, quote, quote, or convincing. However you want to think of it, uh, they have individual volumes. This is your sample polyphony. So if you're worried about processor usage or you want, oops, or you want notes to choke each other. I think I'm learning right now. Key on and off count. Yeah, key on and off count for your sample polyphony. So even at three, one note will choke it. Because you get one, two, three. And then the release. Huh, okay. So we're going to leave it where it was, 25. And that level is just level of our whole sound. Okay, we move on. This is probably the most interesting part, I think, is this flavor module. You can flick all the effects modules on and off on the right side here. Right now the flutter's on, so we're going to turn it down. And flavor, we're going to go full depth, emulate speakers. I wish, I so, so wish this was a standalone plugin. The depth control here, at zero we're full dry, and at 100 we're full wet. And our flutter sounds to me sort of like the flutter from tape. Uh, and less like the flutter from vinyl. So I'm going to turn the depth back down and the flutter back down. And then we have a vinyl distortion, which might be loud. I don't know what vinyl distortion really means. We have vinyl noise, which sounds too low. It sounds more like a bonfire <laughs> than vinyl crackle to me. You hear all that low end it is? It's kind of like you're in the back of a car. I don't like that very much. Compressor, I won't explain to you. I'm sure you understand. EQ, four fixed bands. Same thing. I'm sure you know that. Turn that off as well, move on to the next page. Just delay is on. And these are, again, are pretty self-explanatory, but our mix on our delay is actually our delay volume. So I'm gonna turn these off, so it's less distracting. Turn our feedback down. So even at full mix on the delay, we hear our, hear our dry signal just the same, right? Time division, faster or slower. Left and right ratio, at 150 or 50 to 100, it's ping-ponging left and right. They don't cross over at all. It's just which one is first. Okay, and dead center in the middle is just mono. Somewhere in between will do 75. Okay, we're a little staggered. Very cool. This, uh, these three on the bottom are controlling the EQ of our uh, feedback. So this low, this is a low pass uh, filter all the way down, dark all the way up, quite bright. And then the other two, think of it like a variable Q or a variable mid. Let's turn up our low pass, so there's something there for us to mess with. And I'll 
turn down our feedback because it's getting a little out of hand. It's a variable, think of it like a variable mid or a variable Q. Okay, or a resonant bandpass. We'll turn off delay and then spring reverb. Mix all the way up, which is actually a mix and not just a volume. So all the way up is full wet. We don't have our dry signal at all anymore. Free delay. Time between your key press and when you hear the reverb. Time. How long it persists. Low cut. I think is actually a resonant filter. Because as I'm low, you hear more low, and as I'm high, you hear more high. Anyway, diffusion, the way I've been describing it, at 100%, it's like a room, and at 0%, it's like a hall. The sound's coming straight back at you at zero, and a diffusion. There's more space, your width here. Mono at zero, stereo separation at 100. And we've already talked about mix. There you go. I will give you some of the presets just to hear them. I love this plugin. It's cool for making samples. Uh, but it's 100% not perfect. I just, I just don't love the sounds on their own. Maybe in a mix, I'd like them a little better. But there you go. That's about all there is to say about the Mellotron. Uh, interesting indeed, and a cool thing to have available here. On to the Selena, which is a 70s polyphonic technology, and right away it does some weird shit. So you have these different instruments, and you can think of them like different oscillators. And so we're going to start with these bottom two, which are the bass ones. And now watch with the keyboard here. Can you see it? Get to a point where they cut off. Well, if I turn those off and turn on one of the high ones. That same, what is that? A flat where they cut off. Uh, on the original Selena, we'll just do one of each. We'll just do cello and viola. There we go. On the original Selena, you have a bass section and a treble section, or a lead section. They do different things. The way most people are going to use this plugin, I don't think that's super valuable, and they realize that too. So you have this option for dual. So even if. Actually, let's just leave it off right now. Um, as I get to this upper part, the two bass instruments, contrabass and cello, are not audible. If I turn on dual, play over the whole range. And the same, of course, is true for the treble instruments. Right, and now for each of these instruments, we have an on and off switch, its own volume, a panning control, and its own octave range. Uh, and over this whole group, we have the ensemble effect, which is like chorus, but think of it like three modulated delay lines that all get mixed together, and they're related in phase. That's off. Sounds just like sawtooth, right? And then on. We're going quite fast. We have separate volumes for bass and tremolo. I'll speed that up again. Okay, ensemble off again. Simple and cheesy. Uh, one thing you'll see a lot of people do, turn everything up, start panning things randomly, and giving yourself uh, more octave range on the low ones. Busy. Let's add the ensemble, make it busier. OK, 
Okay, you'll hear that sound a lot. That's pretty much our oscillator section. Not much else to discuss. Here on the sound, we have the same filtering options we had. Um, we have a lot of the same options we had on the Mellotron. Crescendo and sustain are actually attack and release. Time to fade in and time to fade out. Put them both up a little bit. Formant, A, E, I, O, U. <laughs> Slightly resonant, low pass filter. And then age, turn it up and just listen. Not hearing much of a difference, but we've heard it before. These performance options are the same. Sample polyphony is the same. Flavor section is all the same except for monofy. So here it is off, and here it is all the way up. It combines your stereo channels. Which is interesting, and I don't know if the Mellotron doesn't have that because it's just already in mono, but we have a chorus with quite good control. It can sound phasey, it can sound flangy, which I'm a huge fan of and I think belongs on the Selena. In fact, I wish there was a phaser here instead of a chorus because we already have the ensemble and they cover some of the same ground. Or give me better control of the ensemble and have a phaser at the end here. I hit the, I hit the sample polyphony limit there at 25, I'm sure you noticed. Since we're playing so many, I might turn it up, in fact. Since we have so many instruments playing all at once. Love that. Uh, we have four fixed bands of an EQ that I will not show you. Delay and reverb work the same as they did on the Mellotron. CPU. Okay, there you go. I like the sounds available in the Selena. I think if you throw a phaser effect on it or some of the lo-fi stuff as well, it can really, really be valuable and quickly get you to that sort of a synth string vibe, synth string sound. Uh, which we want, and getting there quickly is nice and easy. Okay, and on to our next one. We're gonna go, whoops. On to our next one, we go to the Odyssey, which, if you are not familiar, the ARP Odyssey is a mid to late 70s uh, mono or slash duophonic synthesizer. Our version here is four voice polyphonic. Uh, Korg did a reissue um, not that long ago, and I have one of those, so I'm super familiar with this. And the first thing I'll tell you is the layout of this plugin is super frustrating <laughs> if you aren't familiar with the hardware layout. Uh, we'll get into it later, but in general, things that'll be helpful now, pay attention to the colors. The color coding is important. Oscillator 1 is always blue faders. The LFO is pink, sample and hold is yellow, oscillator 2 is green, okay? The first thing I'm going to do with a lot of two oscillator synths, I'm going to detune them. And I don't know why this control is in volts. It doesn't mean anything to me, but we can see our sense here on that little display. Okay, and another thing I'm going to do right away, keyboard filter and keyboard amp, that is your velocity and your aftertouch together controlling your filter and your volume. I'm not used to that, so I'm not going to have it on until I want it. Okay, 
and already there's not much to show you on this first page uh, because it all relates to other things. So we're going to step through to the next one. LFO is in the top left. You just get to decide its speed here. We'll get back to it later. You have two envelope generators, one that's attack and release only. And when you hold um, the note, it's full on sustain. So it's ASR really, and an ADSR, which I'm sure you're familiar with. And they can be triggered by the gate or the LFO. So these switches are down here. Okay, and sample and hold mixer, we will get to later. Here is our mixer and our filter. So our mixer is this bottom left. You see where these, and the cue link gets in the way. You see where these uh, like sort of delimiting boxes are. These three here are for your mixer. So nothing right now. Just one oscillator. Just our second oscillator. Okay, and these switches down here, or we change to another waveform. Pulse. Or saw. And we also have volume for noise. Or a switch to change it to a ring modulator. Or the ring mod output, I suppose. And that is um, the oscillators modulating each other. Also, just a quick complaint. Noise is way too loud. If I go all the way up, I don't even, I'm not even going to. It's about equivalent at one-fifth of its full travel to the volume of the other two oscillators. Insane, there's no reason for that. Okay, we're back on just the two oscillators. Our filter is here. Our envelope contribution to the filter is here in red. Remember, our envelopes are all red, so now it's nothing. And some resonance. What's our key links doing here? We also have a high pass filter right here. Excuse me, which sounds slightly resonant to me. Okay, and right down, look at our boxes again. What else can go to our filter? Either our LFO or our sample and hold. Our keyboard CV, which is like uh, keyboard tracking on a lot of other things. The higher up the keyboard, the brighter you get. Uh, or our sample and hold mixer, or if you have a the setting turned on for uh, an expression pedal, you can do that there. Um, our envelopes, our envelopes are not fixed to controlling the filter or the amp, respectively. You can use either shape on either parameter. Okay. And so by default, they're both on ADSR, I believe. I changed it a couple times. <laughs> I like to have my amp on ASR, which is when the red is on top here. Make sure you can see that. Yeah. And red on top for the filter is ADSR. And so I'm going to add a little bit of attack. And then make this. Take that attack away. There we go. I like that. Back to our filter here. Lovely. So now onto the kind of the quirky stuff I showed you already. Actually, let me just let me just listen to pulse width. Huh? And that can be modulated by our LFO or by our envelope. I'll go back to the mixer and back to a sawtooth. We'll just leave it on one oscillator for now. Uh, we can also affect our filter with our LFO. Back to here. And now the really quirky stuff. We're going to undo that contribution and change it to sample and hold. Leave that up. I'll show you how sample and hold works. So if you aren't familiar, you sample a value at a certain frequency at a certain interval, and you hold on to it for a while, right? And so it's associated with random values often because it's paired with noise. So let's just bring noise in here. It's either that or the pulse wave of oscillator 2. So I'll bring up in our noise here. <laughs> Down. Turn that contribution all the way up. 
so you hear it jumping around random values, right? At what rate? The rate from our LFO. So if I speed it up, changing more frequently, slow down, changing less often, you can add more voltage to this mixer to be sampled. So you have a wider range. I'm going to use the sawtooth from oscillator one. Okay, and it's really steppy, right? Every time the LFO hits, we have a totally different value. Well, if I introduce lag, it smooths out those values. So we're gently changing between random values. Lovely sounds. Uh, this can also be triggered by the keyboard. So every time I hit the keyboard, I get a new random value, just for a little bit of difference. And I think in time with the LFO uh, is how most people will use it and how I think it sounds the best. Uh, on now to the effects section. It's an echoplex. Turn it on. Sustain is our feedback. Uh, and this mix is a true mix. So all the way up is full echo, all the way down, full dry, put somewhere near the middle. Turn down our feedback. And our time is a slider here. More feedback. More time. Can't help myself. Turn that off. Okay, and the rest of our settings our voice mode. Duophonic is how an original Odyssey would work, so we're going to turn up our filter and turn on our second oscillator, and I'm going to put it on a pulse so it sounds more different to oscillator one. Duophonic means, uh, in this case, if I play one note, we hear both oscillators together. If I play them both, oscillator one is the low, oscillator two is the high. Okay, uh, mono is as if on the hardware. Uh, Odyssey, you were plugging the pitch out into the pitch in, and it's just low note priority. Both oscillators sound together, but it's low note priority. I find that frustrating. I, I see that as a limitation and not as like an interesting quirk. I see that as just something you should have been able to change. Plus, there's plenty of screen real estate here to not have a pretty box. Why can't I pick uh, last note priority? Anyway, and then two, three, and four are polyphonic. <laughs> Uh, in individually articulated amplitude and filter for ear two oscillators for each voice. Lovely portamento gliding between notes. Sounds good. You have a global transpose. Uh, two octaves each on the switch. Not sure why. It's on the hardware. It doesn't make much sense here. <laughs> Change our octave. Let's get our portamento back down. And more performance controls for those. Uh, your noise can be pink, which is filtered, and white. I will go back in the mixer, bring our noise up just a little bit. God, that is too loud. Oh, why is that so loud? And then pink. Okay, and that'll change the way your sample and hold responds. And if you have it audible as part of your filter, it'll be different. And we talked pretty much about these performance controls. Ooh, shit. <laughs> Turn that off. And we've talked about these performance controls. Mod wheel to vibrato. Mod wheel to pulse width, which I'm not on a pulse, so you can't hear it. And then keyboard contribution to... Actually, this is velocity and aftertouch contribution to the filter and the amp. Again, that could have been separate. There's no reason for them to be the same. Especially because... Uh, while well, your velocity is per note, your aftertouch is not. So it's just a confusing way to group those up. Anyway, 
all that said and done, I wish we had uh, subtractive synth with controls like this that sound like this that had more than four voices. I don't like using tube synth. That's not intuitive to me. This is, because I'm a hardware synth guy, if you aren't a hardware synth guy, if you aren't used to these parameters, this is kind of a horrible layout to try and understand. To me, why would I not change my wave shape on the oscillator page? Why do I need to go into the mixer and touch these switches, which aren't super clear that they are or aren't switches uh, the first or second time you come to this plugin? I can't imagine it'd be that much harder to put the switch here or have your modulation include, you know, how much does your LFO go to your pitches? It's just, it seems to be laid out, one, not for standalone for cycling through so many screens or staying true to the hardware to what end? Why stay true to the hardware when most of the people aren't that familiar with it? What are you gaining out of that? I don't have a better experience because I can only choose between my sample and hold and my LFO. You know, I'm limited for what is a reason that doesn't make any sense to me. Scoot everything further to the left and let me do sample and hold separately from just the LFO on its own or let sample and hold have its own LFO. You know what I mean? All these things that don't seem like very hard additions for software left out for the sake of what? Authenticity? And at, at what point do we care about that when it becomes less convenient to use these things? Anyway, I'm, I'm bitching. I think uh, the Odyssey sounds good and, and great, and it's probably what I'll reach for for bass synths now or just simple, you know, monophonic patches more often than anything else because it's controls that I'm familiar with and a layout I'm comfortable with. Alrighty, and I'm gonna check my recordings here. Alrighty, recordings are all good. I'm gonna change to our last and our most frustrating. <laughs> this is hype. Uh, if you aren't familiar with hype, that's okay. I think it's super. <laughs> if you open this up, Hype is super frustrating for somebody like me who likes to tweak and change and understand what they're messing with because the way it works, you have this right side is all macros um, that are options that you can find somewhere else. So like see our cutoff and our resonance. That's also right here. And they're at 45 and 52, same exact values. Okay, so we have this redundancy and wasted screen real estate. Not that it's a bad thing to have an easier to get to parameter, but it's not that hard to get there by changing pages once. And in so many of these other plugins, they expect us to jump around through pages quite often to change things that are related to each other. So I don't think it saves that much time, especially if you're used to working with these. Anyway, in general, Hype is a two oscillator synth, and those oscillators can be a virtual analog voice or a wavetable or a sample, or FM, okay? And so if you're in these preset folders, I'm gonna go all the way to the bottom to init, and then you have an initialized version of each combination of oscillators you might have. And so we'll just start with analog init. I'm gonna turn the master up just a little bit. Oscillator 2 on this init, oscillator 2 and oscillator 1 are the same. I'm gonna detune them a little bit. And then this is where we change our waveform. We only have a few. Pulse width on this one. See, already the macros are super frustrating to me. So this is square, this oscillator is synced square, and this says pitch right now, but as soon as I change it, it's synced frequency. So the frequency of the oscillator it's synced to. What annoying. Saw so unison detuned between these multiple oscillators. And not to get too nitty gritty, but I bet that's how all of these work. I bet it's all wavetables and just they change the parameter to say, you know, FM amount or whatever when it's really just moving through a wavetable. And that's part of why we can't have full control over the oscillators because it kind of pulls the curtain down. I'm not sure about that. That's conjecture, but I'm comfortable guessing that. I think the samples sound really, really, really good when you get into some of the 
sort of um, bellish. Let's try this. Thicky, tag yourself. Get that form back to zero. I was just checking if it was a wavetable position. <laughs> this one's pretty interesting. Wave start. Kind of like our wavetable position, but really just more like a sample start. Bend speed. Not sure why that's part of our macro, but kind of cool. Okay, keep looking. I think these are great. I haven't moved past this page because there's I don't think there's much reason to, but I will explain what is unique or strange about them. This is our two envelopes, which I'm sure you understand. There's our filter and our resonance, which we also have here on the uh, macros page. Spike and spike decay is like an additional decay envelope based on your velocity. Super confusing. Uh, we have switches for everything on the right, which persist, which is annoying to me because the other ones don't do that through all of the screens, they'll do it on most of them, but not all of them, like the Mellotron doesn't have it on the first, Selena, uh, I don't believe, has it on the first, and now we just have wasted screen real estate on these first two pages that could be full controls for both oscillators. So, anyway, LFO. Which controls something assigned per preset, per macro. Mod is kind of a chorus. Um, Huge volume drop. Having difficulty hearing it. Let's turn it off. There you go. Huge volume drop, uh, which is frustrating. Uh, distortion. to a different oscillator. I like that. Hype is just our four band EQ, uh, but with a prettier user interface. Uh, effects two is our delay and our reverb, which again, I'm not gonna explain. We've seen that a hundred times. Compressor and pumper. Huge fan of pumper. One knob, two knob, side chain, that's it. Brilliant. I wish, I really wish that the rest of the controls of Hype were good enough that I could just be using that all the time. So anyway, and here in our setup, kind of the boring shit, we have a master volume, which I don't think is paired. Yes, it is. It's paired with the macro all the way up here. Again, why do we need them in both places? It's just wasted screen real estate. Uh, pitch, our glide time, which we saw was one of our macros earlier as well. And then a second LFO which is like your performance LFO, and it can be brought in with your aftertouch or your mod wheel, uh, and it can have multiple shapes. Let's bring it in on aftertouch. Lovely. Or if you have LFO off, aftertouch goes straight to your pitch. Okay, there we go. Oh, there we go. That's kind of all the settings in here. Uh, I'm not going to talk about another delay and a reverb. You understand how that works. But I will continue to go through these. Um, I will continue to go through these oscillator shapes. So if, if you aren't familiar with wavetables, imagine a bunch of 
waveforms, individual waveforms stacked over time, and you sweep between them. In this case, I believe it's our filter envelope. Yep. And so each of these oscillators is a different group of waveforms that's getting shifted through. And this one is sort of traditional analog waveforms. Very cool. I'm going to turn down our envelope sweep and manually go through it myself. Quite cool. Let's go here. Turn our envelope sweep up again. And then click through some of the more exotic stuff. Just like that. to FM, which is not really FM. This is your oscillator ratio. And then your FM mod there is not even from our envelope here. Oh, here it is. You know what, I think that's everything I'm going to say about hype. I'm, I'll give you some of the uh, completed presets, just so you can hear it. Lead sync, sure. Uh, it's a complete set of options, but it's just like if you've ever used Massive or Massive X, you open it up, it's like, where the fuck is this sound coming from? And if you want to change any part of it, it's hard to know, is this filtered because it's part of the sample? Is this filtered because it's in one of the effects? Is this filtered because of the cutoff? and you need to look in a lot of places to tweak the things you want to tweak, and it's not intuitive at all. And just clicking through presets is probably the only way 80% of people are ever going to use this. And rightfully so. Because they've set up parameters we don't have control over. made some great presets for us, and you have a shitload. But now maybe you have, you're have you slightly more equipped <laughs> to understand what you're looking at. Because right here, see we have this oscillator blend. It's not changing anything. Oscillator mix isn't changing anything. Why not? I don't understand what's going on in these macros that that isn't something I can control, especially when I have two oscillators here. Is this format just over oscillator one? I can assume so, but I don't know for sure. And not that it doesn't sound good, but I can't tweak it. So, there you go. I'm gonna... Alrighty. There you go. If I skip something you want me to talk about, throw it in the comments, and I, I will talk to you about it. Um, if you want a follow-up video on anything, I'm happy to do that as well. Um, I don't feel like I skipped any of this strange stuff. I don't feel like I skipped any of the confusing stuff. Um, I just skipped the stuff that wasn't worth going over. Most of the stuff that I was going to bitch about in hype, like, you know, we're not going to change. So that's, here's my wish list for the end of this. <laughs> I want the flavor effect from the Selena and the Mellotron built into its own effect. I want the um, Echoplex emulation in its own effect. I want a subtractive synth with controls like the Odyssey that isn't limited to four voices. I would like to see a control layout for Hype, Hype Pro, whatever you want to call it. 
it doesn't have the macro page. It just has a second page for um, one page for each oscillator. We know you have room for it. We know the parameters are there. And maybe it's not robust enough to let us do that. And that's why it has macros like that. Or maybe the whole idea is you cruise presets. Uh, and if that is the case, then good on you. You've succeeded. Anyway, I could complain forever, but there you go. I, I skipped over some things, but it's the things that I don't think uh, are worth explaining because you guys probably know what a compressor is, and I don't need to show you the same reverb four times. Uh, and hype, I just, I'm frustrated by the way it's controlled, and it's pretty clearly intended for people to be cruising presets anyway. They gave us 1,500 presets. The whole idea of a macro is you don't need to go digging for the parameters that'll change that sound. Uh, in a way that's pleasing, in a way that's usable, they're already there for you. So, uh, Hype is probably not a product geared towards me, and I do recognize that. So, anyway, I hope I was helpful for Mellotron and Selena uh, and Odyssey. If you have any questions about those, please, please, please throw them in the comments. If you want to talk shit on Hype, <laughs> I'm happy to do that. If you want to tell me what you use it for, I'd love to hear that too. My name is Jorb. I love the NPC Live too. I love all gear. Appreciate you watching. Really hope to see you in the next one. Cheers.